If you're new here, I'm Allie. I'm a wife and a YouTuber and a student, which I am graduating May of this year. So I'll finally be done with my undergraduate degree in anthropology. Today's video is going to be about running and how your average woman can get into it. This is not in any way an athlete's guide. This is a regular schmegular advice for your modern woman who's just trying to get in a little bit of cardio during her work week. So if you like my content, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, subscribe down below, and hit the notification bell. The fact that I am a runner is really weird. It wasn't something that I ever thought that I would get into, but I ended up discovering that I loved running when I was in the military. I hated running in group formations. That was awful because I'm really short and the formation is led with the shortest person in the front when it's done the right way. It is not always done the right way. So you could be a very short five foot four and end up in the back of the formation having to keep up with people that are taller than you and that leads to a lot of injuries. I actually think that there is a lot that the military gets wrong when it comes to physical fitness. But at some point I got an injury where I couldn't run in formation. I ended up getting this piece of paper that said that I didn't have to. So I ended up running by myself and I got to see some of the beauty in Kansas while I was doing that and I thought to myself wow I really love this stuff and part of that's because I get a really easy runner's high a lot of people don't I mean it's legal right it's totally legal okay in there that's all it is I wonder if that has something to do with my own neurobiology where I struggle in my day-to-day -day life to experience joy, but when I'm running, it's kind of guaranteed as long as I'm booking it for over 15, maybe 20 minutes, just going as fast as I can with steady breaths. It's an amazing experience. I highly recommend it. If you have to choose between a runner's high and a narcotics high, I highly recommend a runner's high because at least you earned it, right? <laughs> so I ended up getting into it because of my military career and I was talking to a mentor. He was saying that there are some commanders that run on their own free time and we from the military know that there are commanders that really can book it five miles at any point in time. Some are even crazy enough to do seven miles and make the entire company do it. There's also this thing called fun runs. It's actually quite miserable. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. How dare you? But he was explaining that these men tend to do it in their private time. I asked him why, and he said that it was because they were pursuing their own personal excellence. So I asked him, well, do you think I could run a marathon? And he was the first person to tell me ever in my life, yes, you can do something that physically intense. I wasn't into sports as a child. I didn't do any extracurriculars. So athleticism to me was pretty intimidating. And I kept hearing from people when I got overweight, well, if you work out and eat well, it's gonna benefit you more than just your body, but also it's gonna benefit your mood. And I'm sitting here like, what are all these upper middle class white people trying to tell me? So then I actually went out and I did it. And I was like, oh, like these people are on to something and I haven't really stopped except for this one point in time where I had a really significant autoimmune flare. There is something about having an autoimmune disease that makes you appreciative of the good days that you have when you can shuffle on your two feet and put them to good use. It is such a more appreciative experience when you get to do something like that, knowing that there have been other days in your life where you really struggled to even get out of bed. So I threw myself into it. I ran my first half marathon in 2021. That was my second half marathon. I haven't run a marathon yet. It's something that I'd like to do, but you have to train for that and you can't train lightly. Honestly, I don't know when I'm gonna get around to it. So we'll see what happens. But for your average woman who's wanting to get into running, I don't want you to get intimidated by going the distance or going for speed. I want you to find something that's gonna be sustainable because the best fitness plan that you could ever have as a woman is going to be the one that you can keep. And if your fitness plan is gonna be walking for 30 minutes, three times a week. I think that's an excellent plan. Some people really want to go and get after it. They want to work out five to seven days a week. They want to spend one or two hours doing it. That's amazing. I've been there. It's easy to stay on top of your goals when you're motivated, but when motivation is not there, you need discipline. And running taught me a lot of discipline. 10 miles will teach you some daggone discipline. So when you're setting these goals for yourself, when you want to get into running, don't make them so far out of reach. Set something normal. Your first goal should be 
to run a mile. That's it. Now the process for that is going to vary from person to person, what you can tolerate, what your body can't tolerate. Make sure you're listening to your body because women are prone to knee injuries when it comes to the running sector of athleticism. So you want to go for that first mile. What is that going to look like? What it could look like is your very, very first week, you want to run half a mile. But what you'll probably end up doing is running and stopping when you can't run anymore and then walking and then running and walking and running and walking until you get to half a mile and maybe the next week you add on a quarter mile. So your second week you end up running three quarters of a mile and then maybe your third week you end up running the full mile. You have to take these things slow because running leads to a lot of overuse injuries. When you think about running six miles, it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're looking at the steps that are in a mile, it's significant use. There are 2,250 steps in one mile. You multiply that times six, it's a lot. Multiply that times more, it is a lot. It's a lot of wear on your joints, your ankle, your knees, your hips. And that's also a conversation to be had about the kind of shoes that you're wearing. When I first got into running, I had very tight muscle spasms and I had really tight joints that were locked. So I had to start off running with Hoka's. Hoka's are a specific shoe brand that is to decrease the impact of the shock absorption from the floor to your joints. And it can be helpful for someone that is overcoming injuries. Eventually you might end up upgrading your shoe. Right now I run with Brooks. They have a really good grip on the bottom of the shoe that helps me to trail run if I want to. And you can also look at the different environments that you're running in if you are encountering some pain. There's gonna be a difference between running on a gravel path that allows for a little bit of give with each step in comparison to running on concrete, on sidewalk, on pavement. That's gonna be a lot of shock absorption for your joints, which is why I think shoes are very important. You can start running with whatever pair of shoes you probably already own. I would say do that, see how you're feeling about it. Eventually you're gonna to wanna to invest in a decent pair of shoes because that's investing in your health in the long term. You don't wanna mess up your joints in your 20s. Once you're done with that, what is missing from your shoe, from your experience? What joints are hurting? Are you supinating? Are you pronating? Meaning, how is your foot turning with each step? Does one foot turn one way? How's the other one? So you take your original shoe, you go to a running store, hopefully if you have one, one that's an outlet for shoes, show them your current shoes, and then you tell them your symptoms, and they're gonna be able to tell you what a better pair of shoes is going to be. That is a worthwhile investment. Do not skimp out on the shoes. They will do you some justice. So you set these easy, sustainable goals and you meet them along the way and don't have such a tight time period for yourself to get this stuff done. And you can go out there and you can look at training programs. Maybe you do want to run a 5K, maybe you want to run a 10K, maybe you want to go nuts, do the half marathon, an actual marathon or an ultra marathon, more power to you if you do. One of the things that women need to be mindful of when we engage in sports and especially lower body sports is the difference in Q angles between males and females. The Q angle is your quadricep angle. Women have larger hips for childbirthing. Your hips widen when you go through puberty. What that means is that there is a lot of stress that is going to be put on the knees for women in comparison to men. And there is also some stress that goes into the hip joint. We are not gifted with as much testosterone as men when it comes to cartilage repair that testosterone can really afford for. I have bilateral labral tears in my hips. So I still run, even though technically I'm injured, even though technically I need surgery, I still go out there and I do it and I find ways around it through taking care of myself. I make sure that I'm getting my massages. I make sure that I'm foam rolling. I make sure that my shoes are good to go. You don't wanna skimp out on your recovery regimen when it comes to running because it will come back and it will get you and it can take you out of the running game for a couple of months. Sometimes it can be as bad as you literally needing to have surgery. That's why I recommend for women to take it slow because if you get on this athleticism path and you immediately get injured, 
you're probably gonna wanna quit because being injured sucks. It doesn't feel good. Even people that have been working out for 10 years, they hate that. They get into these massive depressions. The answer for that is gonna be cross training. Maybe you start walking, maybe you start doing yoga, maybe you start riding a bike, what have you. But you just have to be mindful of these anatomical differences so that you know what to look out for as a woman. And when I'm talking about the labral tears, I think it's really important for people to understand that you are not gonna have a physically perfect body forever. You're gonna age at some point, and if you're athletic, you're gonna get overuse injuries. So when I was in the military, I carried a lot of heavy backpacks. I was short, my hips were wide in comparison to a man. That ended up putting, I believe, a lot of pressure on my femur head and the cartilage that surrounds it. So the labrum is gonna be in any major joint that you have. You have labrums in your shoulders and also your hips. So this is the femur head, this is the labrum. My labrum is torn. There's a bit of a gap in there. So it doesn't really hold on too good and maybe there's a little bit of movement, but I've been able to work with it and there are tons of other athletes out there that are tore up from the floor up. You just would never know if you never had that conversation. So if you do get injured in the process of getting into running, be mindful. So many people before you have and they've overcome them or they found alternate sports that help them the most. And from a mental health standpoint, the reason why I recommend running to women is because it did more for me and my mood instability, my anxiety and my depression than any medication ever did. I had tried mental health medications, I want to say from age 15 all the way into my mid twenties and nothing ever hit it right. There was always something missing. Maybe it made me feel groggy. Maybe it was mitigating my mood on one side of the spectrum, but it wasn't doing anything on the other side of the spectrum meaning, okay, we got rid of the anxiety, but I have depression. Well, now we're on another med, we got rid of the depression, but now I have anxiety. Or maybe I have more anxiety than I did before the medication. I got into long distance running and it has been an absolute game changer. It got me off of medications and this is not an advertisement for you to stop taking your medications without medical guidance. Nothing that I'm saying is supposed to be medical advice. Go see a mental health professional or your primary care before you're thinking about getting off of these medications because there is a lot of risk associated with rapid withdrawal. So keep these items in mind as you explore running as a woman. I hope this video was helpful. I'm going to put a couple of links in the description below. There's going to be a study in there that talks about the link between mental health and running because that is not new news. It's old news that running helps with anxiety and depression. So that's something that you could research below. I'm going to drop something in there about cue angles so that you can understand the difference difference in anatomy between men and women and to be on the lookout for something like that. And I'm also going to drop my favorite foam roller in the description because that's what I use. And I use that because when I run too much and I don't stretch, typically I'm going to get knee pain, but my knee pain is not coming from my knee. My knee pain is coming from my IT band and sometimes my TFL. These are all very a and P terms, but just look at the different structures in your body. Whenever you do have a pain, make sure you're seeing a physical therapist. So I use this foam roller actually on my outer thigh to mitigate for my knee pain and it works every time and it worked better than physical therapy ever did. So these are just some tips or tricks. If you like my content, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, subscribe down below and hit the notification bell. I will couple this video with another video where I talk about the difference between cardio and weightlifting. I don't have a fitness channel. This is all general advice to help women out there to come up with sustainable nutrition and fitness plans. That way you don't end up quitting because I don't know if you guys have figured this out yet, but diets don't work. They really don't. They lead to chronic dieting and then you end up gaining weight in different parts of your body that show an indication for increased risk of heart disease. What actually works is a lifestyle change. So that is all I have for you guys. I will see you next time. Bye.